Be prepared, folks. We've got yet another rotten, filthy egg amongst us. Of course, the odds are we aren't going to enjoy it one goddamn smidgen whatsoever. The infamous Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Bandai, Toho, and Advanced Communications Company, circa 1988 or preferably 89. Inspired by the late Robert Louis Stevenson's tale of the same name. To the folks that's in the massacre, James Wolfe and Mike Matei, this is for you both. Who doesn't remember that familiar theme, right? Obviously, it's taken straight out of Rygar, but more on that later. Before we start, however, I'd like to take this opportunity and dedicate this to not only James and Mike from Cinemassacre themselves, but also Rich Hawk and Lisa Vidal from Star Lab Studios, Autumn Lee Bales, aka Old School Gamer Mama from Gatlinsburg, Tennessee, Carly Lieberman, the Boston Open Screen Committee, that is, Van Voorhees, Healy, Atwood, etc., Bill Campbell from Insane Apricot, Jules Carrasa from Gen Y Films, Brooklyn Interactive Group, and Somerville Media Center, DIY The Show, Weird Local Film Festival, Matt Ezra, aka Signus Destroyer 20 X, Jeremy Parrish from Retronauts Video Works, Kim Chen from Rhode Island, The Nerdfit Network, TryHard, Replayed, Kenzie Burke, aka Kenzilla, Tomashi Hiroka, Chris Bennett, aka The Mount Vernon Kid, Dave White and Joe Redifer from GameSack, Larry Bundy Jr., 8 Bit Arc from San Antonio, Texas, Ed Finley, aka Retro Gamer 3, Aaron Hickman, aka Daya, also from San Antonio, Nobita from Find Your Love in Japan, and finally, Gabriel J. de Bencourt, aka Riley Sky 100. With these out of our skulls, what, what do you know? A strange case of Dr. Jekyll indeed, based very loosely on, and inspired by the late, great Robert Louis Stevenson's gothic novella of the same name, it revolves around the studious, mild-mannered titular scientist hell-bent on attending the big wedding between him and the lovely Miss Millicent Carew, or just Millicent for short. However, lots of threatening, fucked-up elements stand in Henry's way to everlasting love that'll make his overall goal a living nightmare unlike anything one's ever imagined, thereby forcing him to remain a lone wolf-slash-bachelor for the remainder of his very existence, much like yours fucking truly. Of course, the demonic Edward Hyde, Jekyll's alternate ego, appears in the world of demons upon the Doctor's ensuing rage after being distracted by the multiplicity of said threatening elements. And who could forget that demo cutscene when he's concocting the potion which unknowingly transforms him into his aforementioned evil psyche, right? Just like the novel and miscellaneous media this game takes after, with the exception of maybe the first film adaptation by Paramount, released nearly a century ago, I might add. Gameplay-wise, isn't it obvious? It's pretty much a strenuous, jarring left-to-right wanderlust in the English countryside during which you, as Jekyll, obviously, are traversing from one territory to the next to eventually reach the church, while contending with and or avoiding the local populace. Remember those threats I mentioned earlier? Made up of gentlemen in vests and suits which either bump into you for no apparent reason, ditto for the random dames, or leave behind bombs, hence the latter's alias, the Bomb Maniacs. Billy Pones, the kid armed with the slingshot, aka whom I like to call the bastard child of Dennis the Menace and Oliver Twist, not to mention has a baneful infatuation on our main protagonist's right to be. Christ, Denny from The Room much? Rachel the fear-mongering widow, Esmeralda from Edward Scissorhands, meet your new BFFF, Elena McCowan, an overweight operatic tone-deaf singer with an ignominiously ear rapey note range whom you have to pay eight coins to pass through. You see this on uh, Cower here? Yeah, you have to pay eight bucks to get past her. Yeah, there you go. Jan the Gravedigger that inadvertently chucks dirt at you. Arnold Abbott's, the retarded, short-sighted hunter that not only fires at ducks constantly, but sends them plummeting from above. And even animals ranging for bees, spiders, dogs, and cats, named Murphy and Luna respectively, defecating crows and the like. When at least Rosette Ranwright isn't a threat unlike everyone else, despite only appearing in the Japanese version by Toho, which of course I'll get into later, except maybe in passing no matter which version you experiment with. But I digress. Nor is the pissing fountain. Control-wise, your D-pad allows Jekyll or Hyde to migrate around of his own free will, up to going to buildings for the sake of taking cover, depending on where it's appropriate. Down a crouch, while B and A, depending on whose identity you're assuming, allows Jekyll to thrust his cane, which of course does shit all except kill off insects, or have Hyde punch and or summon his aptly advertised psycho wave in conjunction with up on the D-pad and jump individually. Above the layout are two meters, one for both Jekyll and Hyde's vitality, the other for their stress and or atonement, with the latter being affected in tandem with the former, depending on how much damage Jekyll endures in the real world, or how many adversaries Hyde does away with in the alternate world of demons with just his psycho wave alone. 
Should you happen to endure any constant run-ins with random inhabitants, or be exposed to either Billy Slingshot attacks, or the Bomb Maniac's insanely agonizing blast radius as Jekyll, the latter two of which I suggest simply ducking under, and jumping farther Christ away from as humanly possible prior to detonation no less, the stress meter will bottom out during every damage interval, thereby forcing the transformation to kick in. And believe you me, this will occur as often as one could perceive, so I'd more than familiarize myself with that shit if I were you. Upon assuming the control of Mr. Hyde, it's an entirely all-new ball of wax. You'll end up confronting an even menacing assortment of foes as you strive to revert back to your initial human form, including but not limited to the following. Quorum, flying long jawed skulls that hurl themselves toward you, random demons with axes, Nunu, demons appearing both as infants and full grown specimens, brain shaped hoppers referred to as Shep, Walric, flame engulfed monsters, Honoria, demon witches that turn into giant red snakes when provoked, Karata, half siren mermaids armed with a harp disguised as a bow and arrow, Aprashka, winged demons that attack using bubbles blown out of trumpets, and occasionally floating satellite esque stones that split into smaller fragments, referred to as Palma, akin to those goddamn astronauts from Sonic 2. Honestly, who the hell could forget those aggravating ass douches, right? And eventually, that is if you survive as Hyde. The tool, a disappearing and reappearing ghastly demon face that summons fire upon coming into a full but brief view. Take note of the following. While coins can be obtained upon vanquishing all the heartless, conniving cockknockers of the underworld, you have to refill the stress meter in a given time frame. Because if you reach a certain point from which you transformed or progress further than Jekyll, lightning will instantaneously strike upon Hyde, hence the disapproval of the powers that be regarding your ill-fated efforts, thereby ending the game in a heartbeat. Ditto if you get snuffed as Hyde. While the majority of Jekyll's quest is nothing more or less than an abhorrent, inescapable nightmare from which there's no chance of breaking away, Zuzo holds to his extremely lackadaisical pace, and his obvious lack of offensive proficiency thanks to that wimpy-ass cane of his, Hyde's alternate excursion when transformed is the exact motherfucking opposite, due largely to the Psycho Ave's random boomerang-like trajectory and its likelihood of eradicating as many adversaries as possible within his path, to not only collect a shitload of coins for that ear-rapey, operatic meatball Elena McCowan, and shift back to the real world, but to execute said objectives in a time fashion, since Hyde isn't supposed to progress any further than Jekyll, as I've established not too long ago, or vice versa if one might prefer, thereby alluding to the belief of restricting one's inner evil self gaining the upper hand over good, hence the titular recurring persona deviations. Even indicating that, the controls are still all over the place depending on whom you're playing as, decrepit and crippled like tiny fucking Tim for Jekyll, and at the very least modest and cathartic for Hyde, if mostly the former, due to reaching the halfway point at which the same old townsfolk constantly and arbitrarily whisk in and out of the scene like cannibals, enacting the invariable, repetitive ass routines we've been experiencing time and time again, not to mention the barrels that roll down every stretch of concrete as you're nearing your end-all be-all destination. I mean shit, Donkey Kong much? And as tolerable as the gameplay schematics turn out to be at first glance, shocking as it is to express, in clear as day reality and over time, it'll haunt your dreams worse than the infamous agony on PS4, a typical shady day job, every goddamn family pet dog in history, and every SAT in high school or college equivalency exam testing session combined. Ditto for who could have guessed the challenge. And since we're on that topic, expect a piss ton of them, no matter which alternate psyche ego you arrogate. In Jekyll's world, as I've already incorporated, most of the local populace will definitely give you an irreversible as shit case of the red ass, regardless of how far you travel. Case in point, and forgive my broken record tactics, but let's not forget those unrelenting bomb maniacs. Even if you manage to leap away from their explosive devices, the radius can be about as random as the publisher's clearinghouse drawings. In other words, you'll still end up taking damage, thereby resulting in not only Jekyll getting extremely pissed the fuck off, but also the habitual transformation procedures in which said reaction results. And don't even get me started with those meddlesome spiders either, whose movement patterns are also erratic, likewise with the other endangered species that frequently impede your path. In conjunction with Billy Pones and his slingshot projectiles, Elena and her protruding notes, both orally and visually, the ducks raining down from Arnold's somewhat indirect gunshots, amongst most of the other intractable obstacles and opposing subjects that'll ensure the chances of achieving true love are for Jack and shit. Oh, and Jack just left the freaking booby hatch. In the original Japanese version, Jikiru Hakase no Homagatoki by Toho, there were two stages that were removed for Bandai's American counterpart, both the city and the alley, featuring newer and more excruciating hazards, most notably the two ladies hurling random items at you from two opposing windows, complete with an accompanying theme, in stark juxtaposition with all the same bullfuck we've seen thus far, including those goddamn rolling barrels. And did I mention Rosette Ran writes the only character available in that particular regional version, who heals you and provides more cash upon visiting her, and that Millicent waits for you at the church near the end, regardless of what the Christ you've been through? 
Before I forget, there's two outcomes depending on which alter ego you finish the quest with, which of course I won't spoil for everyone's sake, except for two imperative strategies that result in these outcomes. A transform into Hyde upon reaching the final area before the church and eventually confront and annihilate Latul, or B just flat out survive as Jekyll and ask for it to every holy deity in history. Most of the essential survival maneuvers on which I've articulated so far are extremely advised. EXTREMELY MOTHERFUCKING ADVISED. And yes, they even apply if you're playing as Hyde. In true Rygar fashion, there's infinite continues upon death, meaning you'll always start within the exact area in which you didn't last long enough. Or more to the point, join the choir invisible, blink for an exceptionally long period of time, earned yourself a one-way ticket to the happy hunting ground, or better yet, cashed in your chips, thereby having the game provide a place to park its bike if you get buried ass up. The only downside is that all the coins you've collected as Hyde, intended for payment to E-Rapey Elena, are taken away upon continuing. I mean, seriously? Either way, let's hope every crucial tip sinks in, and is worth deliberately taking into account for a mind-numbingly redundant or extraordinary experience, both of which are in the eyes and mind of the Beholder. Graphically, for such an egregious and often berated 30-year-old cult classic, the overall visual look and presentation is all pluses and minuses in that most of the ancient Victorian-era scenes are adequately rendered, representing the setting of the novel, both during the daytime and evening, as Jekyll and Hyde individually. On the latter, every building and or structure appears desecrated to shit, which almost tends to repeat themselves, likewise with the participating subjects, not just Jekyll and Hyde themselves, but every other supporting and or opposing character they come in contact with, most notably the majority of the animals and their gawky-ass animations, no pun intended. Also, who could possibly forget the urinating statue found near the end of one of the areas, amongst various other foreground elements? It's no wonder Bandai Toho and Advanced Communications managed to get away with that shit, and under Nintendo's strict family-friendly guidelines, I might add. I mean, it's like with the Fuck Me password in Konami's Metal Gear. Anyways, all harping aside. As far as music and sound, composed with indistinguishable bravado by Michiharu Hasuya, starting with the title theme taken straight out of Tecmo's Rygar, as I just discussed not too long ago, which of course he also orchestrated. Refer back to my Clash of Demon Head review, number 24 from Season 3. <laughs> The majority of the correlating tracks leave much more than necessary to be desired, as regretful as it is to point out. Don't get me wrong here, there's at least a theme or two I somewhat get a kick out of, most notably Jekyll's and Hyde's respective stage themes and the transformation stings when the personas are shifted back and forth. But damn it, let's just face facts, they're all abrasive as fuck! Ditto for the sound effects. For instance, the explosions given off by the Left Behind bombs, Elena's excessively aggravating singing, Murphy and Luna's yelps, you name it. Honestly, it'd be way more invigorating and intriguing to balance flesh-eating piranhas near my ass hairs and or genital region while walking blindfolded and barefoot through a sea of quicksand mixed with fat bastard and gold members own urine and stool samples, and acetone, benzene, nitroglycerin, turpentine, and polyurethane for hours than to endure all this motherfucking anarchy! Regarding Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde's replayability, even at this juncture, there's very little to comment on regarding this dreadful abomination of mankind. Believe it or not, I've experienced much worse on any console in recent decades. However, this one takes the Key Lime Red Velvet Hybrid Cheesecake, if there ever existed one. That aside, in spite of some of the pros I may have indicated not too long ago, its obvious cons all but outweigh the ever-loving shit out of them. Therefore, unless you've got the patience of a saint or a Buddhist monk, equaling maybe that of yours truly, nothing personal. Or if you just love mindlessly wasting precious hour after hour, do yourself and the world a humble salad and steer clear of this heinous fucking disgrace to Nintendo's prolific third generation console at all costs. <laughs> Therefore, what's my end-all be-all final verdict? It's easy to see why many passionately and endlessly shun this title, even today, AVGN 8-Bit Eric and DX Fan 619 I'm looking at you 3 or somehow enjoy and nurture it notwithstanding its faults. Cygnus Destroyer 20 X, I'm also looking at you. Either way, for the sake of preventing myself from echoing what's already been deliberated, avoid this game like the zombie apocalypse, or just give it a spin, your choice. But heed my fair warning for the sake of yourself and your own sanity. Only do so in moderation. Until then, my beloved viewers, this is the one and only Hardcore Retro God disdainfully signing off. Now please excuse me while I go slit my wrists. <laughs>